Eight years to come. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colin King. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's uh, rather sad, really, because when you listen to, or one listens to, the stories coming from the other side of the House, uh, we are not hearing the complete story. Uh, when we look at the, blue, the Greens' uh, Labor view of the world, uh, power prices are set to continue to rise. Because the truth of the matter, Mr Speaker, is that household prices will be affected enormously under the raft of uh, intended policies that have already been put on the table by the opposition. If you consider that house price power is meant to drop by $300 and yet the entry into the ETS will raise house price power by $500, simple mathematics tells you that house price power will continue to rise. Uh, it's very similar to a lot the, the referendum, Mr Speaker, that, or that petition for a referendum that the Greens and Labor opposition attempted to put together. Again, the, the figures do not add up in actual fact. Uh, it's representative of a lot of the policies that Labor is speaking about. One only has to cast their mind back about three months, and what they were talking about then is no longer included in their rhetoric. Effectively, what we really want to do at this point in time is give New Zealanders a real shot of what the economy is looking like. During the most difficult times in three decades or three generations, the living costs are the lowest. They're at the lowest levels of increase in nine, in, since 1999. The interest rates are the lowest that they have been since 1965, and the wages after tax have risen by 22 per cent. That, Mr Speaker, is what benefits all New Zealanders, and we can assure New Zealand that by 2014-2015 the Government will be back into surplus. Now, that may be a signal to the Labor Greens opposition to spend up large uh, with reckless gay abandon. However, we have to maintain that situation to ensure that we make those gains uh, lock in and that we benefit New Zealanders entirely. Uh, so from that point of view, uh, it is important that we continue to look for growth, Mr Speaker. Uh, unfortunately, over the other side of the House, all we hear is about rewriting history, and if that doesn't work, then they pretend that the nine years that that opposition were in government never, ever happened. Let's not forget, New Zealand, that the opposition that we have today put, the, uh, put New Zealand put New Zealand into recession before any OECD country. Now, that is something that needs to be remembered. When the Labor were in, in the Treasury benches, power prices went up by 72 per cent. So it's not rocket science that we have to bear those things in mind. And, and it's all right to talk about spending money with gay abandon. It, it may even be on the side of the angels when they talk about these limited comments. But let's stop and think about some of the stuff that Labor has talked about that is very anti-growth. Uh, they wish to introduce a capital gains tax. Now, they see that as being a, a sort of a silver bullet, and yet it will not be on the family home and therefore will not address uh, the issue that they are trying to deal to. But what it will do, it will morph into a death duties through intergenerational uh, assets being passed on, and, and that will affect growth within the farming industry. I talked earlier, Mr Speaker, about the introduction into the emissions trading scheme. They will bring agriculture into the emissions trading scheme. That in itself is an anti-growth uh, agenda. There will be higher tax, there will be higher company tax, there will be charges on water because we've heard that from, we've heard that from the Greens and we know that at the moment, the way the policies are working, there is a dramatic shift by Labor towards the left. Uh, we are told that they will do away with the 90-day new employment uh, test for employers and employees, which we know has made 13,000 jobs available. Mr Speaker, 
This government here is a proactive growth government. It has got a great track record. And what we're hearing from the other side of the House, the opposition, is only half of the facts. Thank you. The time for this debate has expired. Mr. Honourable Speaker. Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, I move that urgency be accorded the introduction and first reading of the Government Communications Security Bureau.